as the Bible has said it here many times, which we will never want to take the words of men, especially when it comes on to God's word, the Bible. God's word is true, and that's what we listen to. We never want to take the word of men, especially when it comes on to spiritual matters. We check it out. Whatever we're, whatever we're taught, whatever somebody tells us pertaining to the Bible, we should be like the Bereans of old. We check it out and make sure these things are true from God's word, the Bible. And I know it's been drilled into me over the years, Brother Camping. Don't, don't, don't listen to me. Listen to God's word, the Bible, because God tells us to do so. God's word is absolutely true and trustworthy. And we hang our life on what the Bible says, not on what man says. So we, that's what we listen to. We listen, and I can't emphasize that enough. We only listen to God's word, the Bible. In Romans chapter 3, we look at this verse today. In Romans chapter 3, uh, not the entire verse, but a phrase there God used in Romans chapter 3, uh, verse... Verse 4, Romans chapter 3, verse 4, God tells us, For God forbid, yea, let God be true. It says here, let God be true. And that is, is so true. And it says, but every man a liar. Let God be true. God's word, the Bible, is true. We only listen to what the Bible says. The Bible is God's word is God's commandments, it's God's judgment, it's God's word, it's God's testimonies. The Bible came from the very mouth of Almighty God, and that is what we listen to. We listen only to the Bible. If we're, spiritual eyes have been opened. There are all kinds of voices out there in this world. We tune that out, and we listen only to God's word, the Bible, because we know, God's elect, God's people know, that the Bible came from the mouth of God. No question about that. It, it, the scripture is God breathed. And this, is, this, this book is an ancient book. It's been around for thousands of years. And God has written it down for us. And we study it. And when we have come to truth in God's word, the Bible, that's what we trust. That's what we believe. And those of us who have our spiritual eyes open, we hang our life on God's Word, the Bible. And you just talk about God's Word. You can't talk about it enough because the Bible is true. But we're going to look at that verse there. But let's look at Isaiah 46. Isaiah chapter 46. We're going to start reading in verse 9. Isaiah chapter 46. Verse 9, God tells us, Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. There is none like the Jehovah God of the Bible, none like him. We said it before in the past, he's from everlasting to everlasting. There is none like him. He says here, and he goes on, declaring in verse 10, declaring the end of from the beginning. No one can do that but God himself. Declaring the end from the beginning, from ancient times, it can't get more ancient than that, the things that are not yet done. Things in the future. God could tell us because God is God. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows he could look down the corridors of time and tell us exactly what is happening. That's what the Bible does too. It tells us about Judgment Day, the time we're living in. Although these things were written hundreds, thousands of years ago, God can do that. You remember when you read through like Jeremiah in Scamping always say it's today's newspaper. How long ago was Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah written? Thousands of years ago. And yet God is speaking about Things that are happening right now, right now in our day, God can do that. He knows the end from the beginning, from ancient times, the things 
that are not yet done saying my counsel and the Bible is the counsel the Bible is God's word my counsels shall stand God's word stands forever forevermore God's word stand and I will do and I will do all my pleasures see whatever God he declares it it's done you know he he writes about uh, the last day he writes about it, what we're going through he, he he writes all these things because he's writing it from an infinite mind because God can do that and it says calling the ravenous birds from the east the man that executed my counsel from a far country yea I have spoken it I will also bring it to pass he speaks it and he tells us that he will bring it to pass whatever he has declared in the Bible he's gonna bring it to pass you see I have purposed it I will also do it see he's emphasizing that at the end of that verse I also will bring it to pass I have purposed it see he, he, he's the one who declares it that's his will I will, I, I will also bring it to pass hearken unto me God tells us he stout hearted that are far from righteousness I will bring near my righteousness it shall not be far off and my salvation shall not, tar not tarry and I will place salvation in Zion for Israel my glory you see how God has written this it written his, his book he will he will do it he'll and he'll bring it to pass according to his his perfect will he will do what he says he will do and uh, true believers we trust that because why we trust it is not on our account it's because God has saved that person and he gives us the faith of Christ to believe it because we can't believe the Bible truly believe the Bible on our own a lot of people you know they give the Bible, uh, they say they believe the Bible, but their lives could be complete opposite to what the Bible said. All they're simply doing is acknowledging it, but if God has not written his word within our hearts, we can't believe it. We, we just, only the true believer, true believers truly trust the Bible. That, that's it, the only the true believers could really, really trust God's word, the Bible. In Psalm 33, let's turn over to Psalm 33. Uh, Psalm 33. Uh, I want to read the entire chapter, but let's start reading in verse 1. Psalm 33. Rejoice in Jehovah, O ye righteous, for praise is coming for the upright. Praise Jehovah with a heart. Sing unto him with a psaltery and an instrument of ten strings. Sing unto him a new song. Play skillfully with a loud voice. For the word of Jehovah is right. See, the word of Jehovah, which is God's word, the Bible, what we trust, is right. It's absolutely true and trustworthy. The Bible is right. It says, and all his works are done in truth. He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of Jehovah. By the word of Jehovah, see how he's in, he is stressing the word of Jehovah, which is God's word, the Bible. By the word of Jehovah were the heavens made. And when you read the account in Genesis, all he did, he spoke. And this world came into existence. And all the host of them, by the breath of his mouth. And this word puts it in, in the uh, first in Peter, it says the word of God is God breathed. By the breath of his mouth. It says, he gathered the waters of the sea together as in heap. He lays up the death in storehouses. Let all the earth fear Jehovah. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. Would not be something if all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of Jehovah God of the Bible, but only the true believers will. The world could care less about what the Bible says. For he spake, 
and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. Jehovah bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect. The counsel, in verse 11, the counsel of Jehovah stand forever. See, he's telling us his word is true. It stands forever. Whatever he has declared, he will bring it to pass. Trust in God and, and, and he will bring all his, uh, his promises to pass. The counsel of Jehovah stand forever. The thoughts of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God is Jehovah. And what nation is that? There are only two nations in this world, saved and unsaved. And the nation of the, the, the saved is the one whom he is speaking about. Blessed is the nation whose, whose God is Jehovah. And the people whom he has chosen for his inheritance. God has saved you. You are a blessed person. We, everything is going uh, right for us. Although in this moment in time, true believers are going to their judgment and being chastened every day, or God is bringing difficulties in our life. It only is but for a moment. Because it's all it's, how long it is, only but for a moment. All that is going to be forgotten in a new heaven and new earth. This world will never come into mind again. The Bible tells us, and it goes on. Uh, where did I stop? Verse 13. 13? Yeah, 13. Yeah. Jehovah looketh from heaven. He beholdeth all the sons of men. From the place of his habitation, he looketh upon all the inhabitants of the earth. He fashioned their hearts alike. He considereth all their works. There is no king saved by the multitude of an host. A mighty man is not delivered by much strength. A horse is a vain thing for safety, neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. Behold, the eye of Jehovah is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy, to deliver their soul from death, to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waiteth for Jehovah. He is our help and our shield. For our heart shall rejoice in him, because we trusted in his holy name. Let thy mercy, O Jehovah, be upon us, according as we hope in thee. That's indeed a beautiful psalm, but God's word is everything to the child of God. You know, we don't want to waste our precious time in this life reading a novel that doesn't make any sense, or that are, are pleasing to the flesh of men. They were just wasting our time doing that. We ought to spend our time studying and reading God's Word, the Bible. And let's turn over to another passage in Isaiah 45. In Isaiah chapter 45, I believe, verse... Uh, verse 19, I think. Verse 19. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 19. I have not spoken in secret in a dark place of the earth. I said not unto the seed of Jacob, Seek ye me in vain. I, Jehovah, speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. And God has declared it in the Bible. He declared things that are true. He declared things that are a fact. You know, you know, he declared things that he he comes from his infinite mind and he will do what he says. It's absolutely so. God will do what he says he will do. He's not a man that he should lie. It's impossible for him to say something in the Bible that is not true. Our understanding of it may be maybe not right. But God's word is absolutely true and trustworthy, we, and that's what we trust. And in verse 20, assemble yourselves and come draw near together, ye that are escaped of the nations. They have no knowledge that set up wood for of their graven image and pray unto a God that cannot save. And that's what the world does. He prays to an idol, he, he decades the statue and with all kinds of things, and he bows down to it. 
you know, it's said in the past few studies that man wants to see the God he worships. So, in his spiritually dead heart, in his rebellion against God's word, he designed a God out of his own thinking, his own mind, and said, yes, that's my God. Just like the, the, the Egyptian did with the golden calf and all this false God we, we read about in the Old Testament, Asterisk and Moloch and all these things that they, that they do. But we know that God is a spirit. And those who worship him must, it's not an option, must worship him in spirit and in truth. You see, but all these gods of the world are idols. In verse 21, tell ye and bring them near, yea, let them take counsel together. Who hath declared this from ancient time? Who hath told it from that time? Have not I, Jehovah? There is none, no God else beside me, a just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. So all these idle things or statue man to make is, is nothing. They are all idols. There is one God and, that there, and, and he is Jehovah God of the Bible. Let's, let's turn to um, a passage in the book of John. John chapter 3. It's John chapter 3. Uh, let's read, start reading at verse 31. He that cometh from above is above all. And he that is of the earth is earthly and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And what he has seen and heard, that he testifieth, and no man receiveth his testimony. He that hath received his testimony hath set his seal, that God is true. God is true. God is true. The God of the Bible is the true God. He is Jehovah God who, who created all things. And by him, the Bible tells us, all things consist. You see, he is the true God. And I'm saying that, we're gonna, I, read, I read Romans, Romans 3 earlier, the verse I want to look at a little bit today. In Romans 3, he says, let God be true. Because he is the true God. Let God be true. And every man a liar. See, we, when we come on to God's word, we never want to take the word of any man. We don't want to do that. We take it to, take it to God's word, the Bible, and check it out. What's being taught, I said to you. And remember, they're saying the Bible said it. And if the Bible, they're saying something that is not true, and they said the Bible said it, then they're lying to you. That's why we have to do our due diligence of studying the Bible for ourselves and check out what's being taught to us. See, you can't be lazy. We have to check these things out because they're telling you things that could not could be false. So we want to check out them by using the authority which is God's word, the Bible. We never want to uh, uh, let down our guard, so, so to speak. But when it comes on to 